Okay. We're ready to begin. And the next session is going to be with Nest. Chi Yi, I'll be just just um, stay back for a moment. I'll introduce you and then come back on screen. Thanks. Our next uh, presenter is Chi Yi Tang, uh, electronic engineer with NIST. And Chi Yi Tang is going to discuss simulation based testbed for cybersecurity evaluation on railroad systems. So we had a really interesting discussion with Chi Yi. Um, prior to, to uh, putting the agenda together. And we're really excited to hear him uh, tell us a little bit more about this topic. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the stage over to Mr. Chi Yi Tang. And Chi Yi, over to you. Great. Thank you, James. Should be able to share your slides now, sir. OK. Let me turn that on. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I am very grateful that I can uh, uh, I can be here with you. Thank you, James, for inviting me to this conference. Um, I've heard a lot of great talk this morning on the on the topic uh, on the railroad on the cybersecurity. Um, so today I'm going to talk about what we do at NIST and what we uh, what uh, what the, what this test bed is all about. So. Um, a little bit about NEST, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. It is a, um, a uh, uh, agency under the US Department of Commerce. So um, what we basically do is we, we publish, we develop and publish standards and guidance. Uh, we are very big on uh, measurement science because all those standards we, we base on measurement science. Uh, we have a lot of different um, area of expertise in our agency that doing different kind of measurement and standards. You can see that from advanced manufacturing, from IT cybersecurity, to latest that we have a newer priority area like quantum computing, like uh, AI, uh, and all the different kind of um, advanced technology that we are we are embracing. Um, just give you a feel that we have uh, we have like four um, Nobel Prize winner over the years in our site that um, that uh, doing a, a wide variety of different um, um, science and uh, measurement and uh, uh, technology development. So we are in Gatorsburg, Maryland, and we have another site in Boulder, Colorado. That's our two main uh, areas. Um, well, before going in the detail, maybe I tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Chi Yi Tang, and I I start my career as a uh, firmware or a hardware engineer. I start off with just making electronic board, electronic board and writing uh, firmware on on that device. So the first job I got is we are making uh, telecom equipment, network equipment, like uh, network switches, routers, voice over IP communication equipment, all the, all the different uh, kind of like embedded system that um, carry data for over the copper, copper uh, wire that, uh, that we do. So after that, I went on and um, I started working for a company doing um, a locomotive air brake. So somebody may say, oh, there's a, a, a big difference, big jump. But actually, is um, on, the, on, the, on the application context, that's true. But on the software or development context, that uh, they have a lot of similarity in there. So I work for uh, that company called WebTag. So I'm mainly responsible for air brake development, uh, 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 locomotive uh, uh, recorder. Uh, for uh, the the big orange box that's sitting in a locomotive, and then I uh, I move in uh, helping with the PTC development mainly on the locomotive electronic part of it that uh, uh, PTC cage that on the locomotive. Um, after that, I came into NIST and helping with the cybersecurity development for the industrial control system. At least that's how we call it. But I will tell you a little bit 
more that what do we what do we deal with when we when we um uh, working on this area, the industrial control system. So here's our lab. Our lab is called Engineering Lab. That our program is called Cybersecurity for Smart Manufacturing Systems. In this program, that we have uh, a couple main goal that we're trying to do. We're trying to develop and promote measurement science base uh, basis for understand the uh, impact of cybersecurity technology on the system performance. Basically, what they say is. Hey, look, we have all this manufacturing system. We want to put on the cybersecurity measure on it. Let's see how it impacts the system performance. In the old time, this is like this is not a, a very big issue because everybody is air gap. So we deal with physical security and then we secure the system. But as you know, as as uh, IT and OT is converging, uh, a lot of uh, OT uh, equipment uh, is being connected through the network. IIoT, IoT, and all sort of things like fall in that category. So we're moving in this direction. Is like, let's see how um, can we develop something that is more objective using a metric-based measurement system to to see the impact. After that, we want to publish the result and the, and turn it into a guideline or standard that help the industry to implement the cybersecurity technology. So things like if you heard about SP eight hundred fifty three is the is a federal information system, uh, uh, I mean federal information system guidance, and we have turned it into a eight hundred eighty two, which is specific to into ICS industrial control system specific. With all that, and we also want to develop a some kind of methodologies to help the industry to to evaluate the the system. So. You you put together a measurement. Uh, I mean, you put together a, a guidance on how to do this and how the how to implement the cybersecurity technology. The the, the next step, where naturally we want to have a ways to evaluate the effect. Is that effective? Is that protecting my system? Is that um, uh, putting a toll in my system, slowing it down, or it can perform just as before, or it can increase some, it, it has some other benefit or, or not. So that's our main goal of our project. So um, this is a, a hyperlink that you can click on to, to have more detail in our, in our system and in our project. So in our lab, that we, uh, the first step, we, we talk to the industry to see, hey, look, we are trying to do this. What do you think is the best um, test cases or scenario that uh, you can suggest us? So based on the feedback, we came back with uh, three uh, system in our lab. The first one is the uh, collaborative robot system, which is uh, you can see it on the, on the lower picture. That is two robot that is simulating a discrete manufacturing. So the robot is picking up parts and help each other and putting the part together. So that's kind of a, a let's say, um, maybe a car assembly, uh, car manufacturing, those, those kind of um, um, uh, industry. The second one is called continuous process system. It's typically is like a chemical system, oil refining, um, or, um, or wastewater management, those kind of system that tends to continuous running for 24 seven and moving a, a mass uh, physical system that, uh, that uh, exhibit a slightly different characteristic than the discrete manufacturing. The last one, not this, is our railway transportation system that I'm going to talk about. So it is a geographic distributed system that with um, with uh, typical with uh, uh, individual skater system that controlling different part of the system, relying on uh, communication between them. Um, the railroad system is quite similar to the pipeline system, so that we kind of group them together. So, in this system, that uh, the railroad system, we partner with. We have a partner at uh, Vanderbilt University that um, that we work together to develop this um, this test bed. So um, on here, and let's with the let's start with the middle uh, functional architecture that um, that how what this system test bed is. The whole point of this is we want to we want to make a simulation of how the railroad operate and how things kind of work around that. 
And then we put on different cybersecurity technology and look at it, how it affects our system. Is there a way that we can measure that? Is there a way that we can simulate that better? Is there a way that we can, uh, from, the, from the simulation, we can tell, hey, my operation is affected, or no, my operation is not affected, or, uh, or any other ways that we can benefit the operator. So we have a couple um, uh, major blocks of this system. So the, the main one is the central one. It's a simulation-based analysis. So we start off with a simulation of the railroad uh, operation that I, can, I will show in a, in, a, in a couple of slides down that uh, have, a, have a couple of trains that are running from a different um, uh, starting point to a different destination. So we have, uh, we have put in a different variety of, uh, of those of those um, operations, like the, the train could be a different length, they can dispatch at a different time, running at a different speed. And then in that simulation, we have put a couple stoplight as a, like a crossing and a couple um, uh, track switches that the system can control. So we want to have a sensor, like uh, you measure the speed, you measure the length, and then you also have an actuator that's something the system can move and control. So like a, like a traffic light. So with that, and then with, uh, with, uh, with the help in Vanderbilt University that we put in two uh, pretty important input. The first one is a risk and threat modeling. So we want to evaluate the system, um, the network. Um, is there any risk or threat that we want to study first? So based on that result, we can narrow down the scenario that we are running on this separate, uh, uh, simulation. The second one is a cyber, cyber scenarios library. So that has built in a, a half a dozen different kind of cyber attack or cyber scenario, like a um, denial of service, man in the middle, we pray attack. So we have a couple of technology that allow us to um, mimic those different uh, situation in our test bed. So that's kind of serving as an input on our simulation and our study. So a, a nice thing that we want to add in, in this simulation is called hardware in the loop integration. What that is is basically um, the operation is simulated in uh, is simulated in software. So you can see it on the right picture. It's like that's our test bed. It's just a 19 inch wrap. You can put a wheel train in there. So everything is simulated, but we 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 want to see the real effect of uh, of a real hardware. So we break out certain uh, simulation point and hook it up into real commercial off the off the shelf off the shelf hardware. So the one you can see in the picture is a Siemens S7 1500 PLC, which controlling a uh, traffic light in, uh, uh, which control a traffic light in an intersection. So um, the software simulation allowed that breakout going into that PLC, and the PLC is driving a uh, traffic light. We using a small like uh, 12 inch tall like smaller light to to simulate that. And we're using a, uh, a couple um, bigger bone and a small uh, single board computer to emulate the traffic light controller. So with that, that allow us to have more real time and more real hardware that we can study to see how things interact between the simulator and the, uh, and the actual hardware. And this also gives us a lot of flexibility that we can put in a different type of PLC, we can put in a different type of uh, control bus uh, or different kind of hardware that we can um, kind of look into that zoom in that area and, and look at it. The, the, with all this, the output is, uh, with all the simulation, the output that we are trying to get a more quantitative operational metrics. So we developed the metrics like uh, op we divide it into different level, like on the operation level, we measure is a, is a train arriving late, uh, the speed, um, maybe fuel consumption, maybe um, uh, breaking time or, or like slow down time. That's affect the operation. And we also collect metrics like uh, under the hood, like the network metrics. Is there any latency of the network communication? Is there any delay? Uh, what if, if so, what that looks like? 
and we also look at different kind of like uh, um, um, control bus. In this very case, that uh, we have something called CAN bus. It's a controller controller area network communication. It is slightly different than the uh, IP communication. TCP IP we call it routable communication. That is the backbone of all the uh, major communication. But air, but the CAN bus is using locally on the locomotive that um, allow it to for the subsystem on the locomotive to communicate with each other. So they are non routable but they they carry uh, essential information that uh, around the locomotive. So we have that um, that controlling the traffic light, and we also have um, have a different kind of metrics that uh, we we want to measure too. We look at the PLC, we look at the uh, dissemination on the processing power. Like the, there's a HMI sitting in the small small HMI that we use to control the traffic light. That we we are looking for those uh, equipment and and how the how our experiment may increase it uh, it low and um, how it perform. So with this test bed, let me circle back into the beginning. So what do we mean by the risk and the threat modeling? So we have this risk framework that uh, Vanderbilt developed with us is we looking at the uh, system. So in on the right hand side, you have see a bunch of traffic light. The traffic light is talking to uh, and the traffic light and the, and the track switches. They're talking to the base station. The base station, a couple of base station through a repeater will talk to a main uh, uplink router that is geographically starting uh, group them together. So all the traffic light, let's say they are geographic, geographically dispersed, and then each of them has a wayside communication, and then group into regional communication hub, and then talk to the um, main dispatch center. So we try to look at that, that, that threat modeling is, hey, look, if one of this traffic light is being compromised, is it going to propagate and uh, affecting others? If so, how 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 would that work? How bad would that be? How what is the vulnerability that if one is affecting the other? So it's building up a model that we're trying to understand better. That where's the weakest link, link or give us a bigger a better picture on how the vulnerability will affect the uh, um, uh, the the other subsystem. So with that, we can we can have a better understanding or assign a score on each of the subsystem that uh, that the risk level. So that kind of dealing with the uh, risk modeling. On the other side, that uh, we are establishing this library that uh, for us to to conduct the experiment. So this is just a list of the of the main um, library function that we are able to do. As I said, that um, they are like the popular DOS attack uh, configuration. Uh, we are able to um, manipulate the network traffic in a, in a very detailed way. That we increase the time delay. We uh, add on uh, corrupt some packet and and things like that. And we also can do a network replay. So it, it that would simply we record a normal uh, rec, uh, network transaction, and then it's a, at a, another time that we we play that. So that's trying to fool the system in a way that uh, they they are confused. So um, the one of the big thing we have on this library is they are stackable and linkable. What that mean is like. A lot of time when the when the network under attack is like it's not a single attack, so they stage together. So they may increase the delay of your network, and then they put on a, a denial of service attack. Just an example. So this scenario, this library, are stackable and linkable, meaning that they can stage the different attack at a different time, and then do a more complicated experiment and see how the how the network responds. So this this are the main input to our test bed. So this is a uh, kind of uh, give a give a, a little bit overview on on that uh, the whole test that we are conducting 
that. Let me uh, see which way I should want to start. Let's start on the right hand side. So that's the operation, the railroad operation simulation. We are using a sim software simulator called Sumo that is an open source simulator that meant for um, traffic. So, but it also support the train um, uh, characteristic in there. So we use that to develop our scenario. And then we have, as I said, we have a bunch of like single board computer for the hardware in the loop uh, uh, integration. So this is talking to our cyber scenario, the experiment manager. Each experiment is managed by a preset configuration, meaning that, hey, we want to stage this uh, kind of uh, experiment or cyber attack, and then how it imposed on our simulation. So um, this is a user interface and allow us to set up each experiment and, and execute. And the one in the left hand side is the is the final analysis, is the data collection that that um, can and collect all the metrics and at the end like show us like how the system perform under under the experiment. Uh, if you may think the experiment, how long it takes? Um, if without the real hardware, that purely in a simulation mode, it could it could we it, it could it could be done in really quick. Uh, uh, you're talking about minutes. So you have a I think we have a thousand train dispatch, and each train is like 50, 40, 50 car, something in that range. That we, the simulation can be done in a few minutes. But once we get into the hardware in the loop, then we cannot run in simulation time. We have to run it in real time because that we're using real hardware in in line with the if the with the simulation. So we have to let the hardware to work in the proper way and the proper time. So that it will be the uh, real time simulation. So uh, another look at that is the is the whole framework how we um, how we put that together is how the um, how how the evaluation framework will interface with the risk assessment framework and also we try to link this in the NIST cybersecurity framework profile that I'm going to talk in the second half of my presentation. That's it's uh, that is a more high level and it's. Uh, uh, is a framework that uh, NIST developed to help um, help the industry to manage cybersecurity. So a little bit more the Sumo simulator. It's it's an open source um, um, uh, simulation that um, that it uh, open source. It's free. <laughs> so uh, we like we, uh, we 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 like that because that it has a lot of features and very capable and has a lot of uh, function that that help us to speed up the simulation. So um, as I mentioned before, that um, allow us to collect all these operational metrics, which is how how the train perform, how the system perform, how the network perform, and also the the network under the hood. Uh, network metrics that how the under hood uh, system is doing. Now this is the first um, kind of the first one we develop in our test bed and just a proof of concept. So it's it's a simple track system with a uh, with a single point source, which is point A is every, every all the trains start from there, and then they the destination is B, C, and D. It's like three different destination. Have uh, uh, have a traffic light in in the way. Have a couple track switches so they they can uh, change the track uh, if needed for them to get to the destination. So we start with this experiment, and then later on we uh, uh, we superimpose on a more complicated um, um, train network that um, on on the left hand side. Uh, we are we are located in Gatesburg, Maryland, so it's a uh, proximity. We borrow the Walmart network map to kind of use that as our as our simulation. A little bit more on that hardware in the loop. So the hardware in the loop that allow us to use commercial hardware that is common to um, is a common control system hardware. So in this case, we have this S seven uh, PLC as our central controller. The S7 has uh, 
uh, has a has a HMI associated with that, so that it can allow us to control the the PLC and also set configuration and configure the uh, the traffic light. Uh, if you see on the the PLC going left going leftward, it's like a Snap Seven. That's an interface for us to go into the Sumo simulation that we send feedbacks to the simulator. So let's say the simulator the simulator is say okay let's turn the traffic light into red in this, this direction so that the other direction will be green and let the train pass so it will send a command to the PLC our PLC will talk to the profinet through the profinet to uh, to a CAN network controller on the CAN network controller I'm going downward uh, on the CAN network controller it will control the single board computer that turn the that turn the actual that drive the actual traffic light so it will turn on the light and then uh, turn the uh, turn the light red and the other light will be green and then we are waiting for a feedback loop to verify that the light is really uh, function as expected and then go back to the PLC and the PLC will update the simulation hey Great, the light is really turned green, so you are, you are safe for the other side to um, um, to turn um, to no the, the the traffic light turned red, so you can save to turn the other side to turn green, so that the opposite train can pass. This is important for our study because for the cybersecurity, a lot of time like um, uh, your system command an actuator to do something, the actuator may not do that as quick or it got stuck, or it got uh, it got uh, it, it it got hacked, or, or some other ways that this is not function as you expected. So a feedback loop would help to verify that the actual actuator is actually in the desired position for you to have a safe uh, operation. So the hardware in the loop provide that. So. After that, we run that simulation. This is some of the result. This is some example result that we collect. Uh, if you can see that that um, um, one of the line is um, on this experiment, on this very graph that you're seeing, that we run um, diff, uh, we run a baseline, which means it's everybody is normal, no no cyber scenario that we impose on it. The red one is we run the DOS attack for like half the time of the experiment. The, the green one is we run the uh, denial of service attack for the entire duration of the experiment. So we can collect and see the different result. We can see, let's say, the speed and the waiting time that how it changed based on the experiment, how it dropped, how it rise. And we're looking at uh, the, the trip duration and the fuel consumption or the speed, things like that. So we collect this kind of to to help analyze the the network, uh, I mean the train network operation, and then under the hood we also have those like all those detailed network metrics that help us to better understand uh, how things uh, are operating. So this is by uh, adding the cyber scenario. So um, on some of the experiment, what we did is we, uh, for example, we want to evaluate the performance of a uh, not not. Uh, we want to evaluate the impact of a cybersecurity measure. Let's say we add encryption onto the onto the system on on a point to point, like point A. Uh, for example, the PLC has an encrypted channel talking to the traffic light controller, so we can we can see how the network it's being slightly delayed because the en encrypted packet is slightly bigger and contain more. Uh, require more bandwidth to, to do that. And also you will see a little decrease in the you need, you will see a little slightly increase of the processing load because like on one side you need to encrypt that information. On the other side you have to decrypt it. So it takes more processing processor power to, to handle those kind of uh, communication. So on on those it won't those kind of small detail it won't pop up to affect the, the train speed, let's say. But it will affect the underlying network performance. Um, you have you have one you have two endpoints like adding like you're talking about millisecond. If you have a uh, hundred endpoint, you're talking about seconds. So those are the details that we are we're trying to piece together and 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 evaluate the impact. 
Now with with that test bed, um, so that's pretty much for our test bed. So um, I want to uh, switch the focus to a little bit on our two our very two uh, 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 main um, publication that we did in the last few years. One of them is the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. Uh, I'm, I, I, I hope, uh, I wonder, some, some of us may heard about that. So it's, a, it's driven by a, a, a presidential executive order that needs to develop a framework that uh, improves the cybersecurity for a critical infrastructure and critical industry. So this framework is, is kind of high level because it needs to cover like 16 or 17 different, um, different, different industries. So in the accent is we have developed a, a five functional area identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover that to give us a whole picture on how to, how to security, how to secure our system. And each of this functional area, they have category that um, kind of divide into more detail and how to do it, and not how to do it, but what was the requirement of that um, of that uh, measure? And a big thing of that is we have in each of this uh, category we have informative reference. So. Um, because of the need to address different industry, we have put in, into different. Um, um, different informative reference in in the manufacturing domain or in this industrial domain that is, uh, for example, NIST SP 853 and 82 and uh, ISA 62443 or even the COVID-5, those are the kind of popular um, informative reference. So we did, uh, we provide a mapping to this uh, cyber, secu cyber security framework and what is the actual security measure to implement that. And then with this, with that NIST cyber security framework that provide high level, uh, um, high level framework that for different industry to, to uh, implement that cyber security, then uh, our lab take it uh, one step is one step in the direction for the manufacturing uh, or industrial in the um, area is we take the framework and we create a profile. A profile is a document or a um, um, a, a, a or a plan on how to implement the um, cybersecurity framework in a in a very specific um, uh, environment. So. The way we took it is we look at the manufacturing environment and say, hey, uh, how the cybersecurity framework can implement that. So um, this kind of covered the, the three different test scenario, test cases we have in the lab, the discrete manufacturing that robot and the continuous, uh, pro a continuous process and the railroad system. So what, what, what we add in this profile is we identify a couple um, objectives. For here, because in the in the industrial environment that uh, maintain human safety, environmental safety, those are the those are very top priority. So and also the uh, product quality and uh, production goals, those are the things that we value and we think that is that is a very high priority to to accomplish. So we kind of have that in mind, looking at the. At the objective that is more essential for the industrial environment and prior that. What we also add some value is in the manufacturing profile, we add specific languages on how to implement measure that is specific to the environment uh, manufacturing industrial environment. Like for the cybersecurity framework, it only tells you to, oh, you need to get an inventory of your system, of your network. That's a kind of a high level requirement. So on this profile, we uh, go into more specific is, yes, you need to document inventory, in, uh, keep inventory of your network equipment, your computer, your network switches, routers, but also don't forget your PLC that may happen to have a network interface. Your sensor, actuator, robot, machine tools that may have a network interface that connect to your network. Um, 
in the IT side, you all, you often look at the, oh, the version number of this application I'm using is 1.1. .1. Uh, but on the OT side, you, you, you may also uh, look into the firmware, which is, which is uh, fairly popular in all the OT equipment. They may have a separate application software that has a different version number. But don't forget the firmware, which is more probably um, uh, 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 you have more firmware than uh, application software. So this is the profile that we are adding uh, industrial manufacturing specific languages to address the um, uh, profile and give give the user more detail and information. Um, oh, I talk about this. This is like um, we. Um, at languages about using the PLC sensor actuator and all the detail, like the, maybe the HMI, maybe the ICS component. That's what I meant by uh, adding languages specific to the industry. Industry. Excuse me. Just need to cut in for a sec. You have four minutes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so the next step we took is we we have this publication is we feel like okay we develop a profile we tell people about the requirement what you do um, a lot of people coming back to us and say uh, but how do we do that so we uh, we establish a, we develop an implementation guide uh, which is a uh, I think it's about eight hundred pages long. So what we did in this one is we actually took the profile and we implement in our lab as, as, as we have a couple of systems that we can put the security measure on. And then we try that and, and write down our implementation experience, experience and how people may take it as an example. How do we implement that? In this guide, we have the detail, uh, the, the implementation, implementation detail, and also we have include metrics and see how things are being affected. So um, we set up our lab. So we deploy different uh, component and add the um, uh, include all the all the tools that we need to to satisfy our uh, cybersecurity uh, requirement. And and then we div uh, we divide into a kind of a technical non technical part. The technical part is that like we can use a different tools technical technical tools that help us to do the job. And also, uh, a lot of those requirements is about procedure and documentation. So we provide a sample of that uh, procedure or policy to to help to uh, to help the uh, uh, industry to to adapt to that. So, also in a big part of this guy is like, hey, we feel like. Okay, now people know how to how to how to put that together and use it. Let's let's look at some performance. Is there any impact? So we look into the different ways that the, the different cybersecurity technology may impact the system. For for the graph you're looking at, it's like, oh, we have a different uh, virus scan, and and it's actually increasing your uh, your computer process use. To, say, uh, to a different level, so that's maybe something you want to uh, be mindful when you're when you're implementing that and um, and and and, and fine-tune your operation. You don't want to do a scan when you at at your peak time. You may want to do a scan at your uh, low um, low usage time, things like that. So that's about it, and um, thank your time and. Um, um, this is my contact information. If you have any uh, question or um, any interest, feel free to send me an email or call me, and then I will be more than happy to uh, to discuss and um, we are and or maybe some collaboration. Um, we recently working with the AAR to um, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to to present our framework to see if we can help any uh, member railroad. And so, um, again, thank you. So, uh, thank you. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Chi Yi. Great presentation. So, for the next 10 minutes, uh, Chi Yi will be available uh, in the session. And I did want to give you a round of applause. So, I think that, you know, that's what we need to do, right? I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. 
<laughs> Thank you, James. That's what you call a virtual round of applause. <laughs> yeah. That works. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. So if you would go ahead and head over to the sessions, uh, anybody who has questions for you for the next 10 minutes will uh, be there. And uh, shortly thereafter, we're going to return uh, to the stage with, make sure I get her name right, uh, Eve McCall. For a long time, I was calling her Eva, so I have to apologize in public to you, Miss McCall. Uh, but Eve McCall is with Microsoft, and she's going to come back to us and talk talk to us a little bit about uh, Digital Twins as a business enabler. So we'll see you in 10 minutes. If you are not coming to the sessions to ask questions, head over to the Technology Showcase and visit our sponsors. Thanks again. <laughs>